Hi, I'm Jeff Cogswell. Today I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the concept of reducers in parallel programming. When you're doing parallel programming, different libraries make it easier to break up your tasks into smaller tasks that can be run on multiple cores. For example, Silk Plus, which I have up here the website for, lets you replace a regular for loop with a Silk 4 keyword and transform it into a parallel version of your loop. You can see here that the syntax looks just like a regular loop. The Silk Plus library will determine how to divide up the loop into subloops that execute in different cores. But you might run into a problem. For example, you might want to add up a value over every iteration in your loop. And the reason that's a problem is two separate cores might try to access the same memory at the same time. Now think about how a value is added. First the code has to read the current value from memory into a register. Then it adds on a value and finally stores the result back into that same spot in memory. So for example, if the memory has 5 in it and the process wants to add 1 to it, it will read the 5 from memory, add 1 to get 6, and store the 6 back into memory. But if you're dividing this work up among multiple cores, you can run into problems, and here's why. Let's say two cores read the current value in memory. So the first core might read the value of 5, and while it's adding 1, before it can even save the new value, the other core also reads 5 in. Now what you want is for each core to add 1 to the value, so it goes from 5 up to 7. The first core added 1 to move it from 5 to 6, and the second core adds 1 to move it from 6 to 7. But look at what just happened. The first core read 5, and before it could put 6 back in, the second core also read 5. The first core takes its 5, adds 1, and gets 6, and stores that 6 in memory. But the second core also had a 5, and it adds 1 to get 6, and then after the first core wrote 6, the second core wrote 6 also into memory. The end result is you get 6 and not 7 stored into memory. Now that's just, of course, one operation. Typically you'll have each core running over part of a loop, and so you can imagine the mess if each of the cores are constantly battling it out for access to the memory. So instead, to make this work, we use a concept called reducers. The way this works is each core's subloop gets its own variable that it adds to. Then there's no fighting over how to access the memory and when it's all finished, you add up the individual values. So, of course, that means the math that you're doing has to be able to be divided up among cores and let each core work on a separate part of the problem. For things like addition, that's not a problem at all because addition has the associative property. And because of that property, you can divide up many different types of problems this way. For example, if you're taking the summation of a sequence, which in mathematics is called a series, that can easily be divided up. And so each core will do its part of the series, and then you add up the individual answers. And that's the idea behind a reducer. The different libraries, such as Silk Plus and Threading Building Blocks, offer objects that support reducers. Take a look at the documentation for the libraries, and check out our articles at goparallel.sourceforge.net to learn more.